McGill's. Doesn't that swimming pool look inviting? But the main thing I came out for here just now was the sight of snow in the mountains above Exeter. And I'm going to zoom in on that scene up there, right? Yep, there it is. Right over the roof of that house is Badger Hill. And there is the snow you can see it. And of course we have much more in the mountain zone behind that. But that's the scene outside the backyard of where this wedding is to be held today. We thought it was something spectacular from our viewpoint. There's snow right down to us. And that's something for us anyway it is. Well, I'll take it back. Through the viewfinder that looked like snow. But that's sunlight. <laughs> that's sunlight. There's the snow. Once more for the record. And just over the corner of that house is Badger Hill. Uh, about four miles east of Exeter. And the snow is there. You just don't think that would be fair, Linda? I don't think that would be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Norma Jean's practicing lessons for the next class at school. Is that right? <laughs> oh, my, look at that. Ooh, hi. Haven't seen you yet today. How are you, Matthew? Hey, you can't, you can't escape. We can't escape. <laughs> There's Dad. This is Bob. No, nobody knows. We'll have to introduce him. You are. I think you are. Me? You want to retract that? That's on film, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that was out of embarrassment, wasn't it? <laughs> this is really amateur photography, but uh, she has a beautiful living room here, fireplace. Look at old Santa's socks there. I didn't see my name on them, but she come right around, sweep it in there. All right. And a lovely, absolutely lovely entryway. I love those double doors. And we're coming around now to where the wedding will be, I understand, in this part of the house. We have ample floor space here and beautiful bay window. I think they're going to set up there. And over there, the lovely Christmas table in waiting. And now uh, that's a wedding cake on there right now. But isn't that going to be great? There's a reflection of LeVon playing the organ over there. All right, we're back to the front door and we'll step outside. Quite a front yard they've made here. Okay, we'll take a walk out and I'll get a shot back towards the house. There, we have visitors coming in. Okay. This is their beautiful place. They're on a busy road, corner of uh, Visalia Road and Anderson Road. But what a lovely spot it is, and they've made it real pretty, picturesque, country living. And there are the bride and groom entering. To be, <laughs> that is. <laughs>
Preparations, preparations. Hello, Gene. Hey. Hello, Auntie. Hi, Merle. Oh, this place did you tell you what I said? Yeah, I realized. I realized I was in disguise. So I'm Gene and, and Eugene and when Linda can wait until we get some oh, mail. Here's the pastor. <laughs> Hello, Dean. Hi. Glad to see you here. You gonna do it, I'm going to try. Come on in, sit down, kids, and you just make yourself at home. They're all, we're all in a, they're waiting to take a picture of you. Yeah. <laughs>
It's kind of hard to get that light, you know. I'm going to get around on the other side. There they are. Let's see, are they ready? Get together, Mel. You and Claudia. Oh, this is this is fine. You make a fine couple. I'll say that. Thank you.
associated with uh, Ron. <laughs> Oh, 
Good to see you. I just had to get a picture of that red and blue outfit. <laughs> yeah. Say hello to Kappa. Say hello to Kappa. <laughs> Sandra, guess who these two are? I can't get them to turn around. I'm across the room from them. But this is Leon Alois family and grandchildren. Send this up to Sandra, Leon. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, hi, Sandra. Get my hands up, I'm on you. Yeah. Oh, no. Look at this one. Maria. You know, they're always pushing Maria out of the way. I'm ready. Maria. Hey, Aaron Farmer. Yeah, Aaron Farmer. Oh, she's going to be a sweetheart. Boy, the precious smile. Who's that in front? Oh, Oh, look at Bill. Who is that? It's got a dangerous place to be in front of these kids. Uh -huh. That's what I would have thought. <laughs> now, I, I can't see from here, so those that know the name. We can't see from here. Barbara Manson is in the back. Beverly. Barbara in the back. Yeah. Barbara Manson. That looks like a friend. Put the mouth. Put the mouth open. Wait a minute, when you see the mouth open, they never see the mouth open. I have no time. There's Steve. Can you see that? No. Can you see that? That fell down there. That makes a difference. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> This is going to Sandra. <laughs> now, Marilyn, the rest of us figured that out about five minutes ago. Where are you been? She didn't have any gray hair before I became a kid. You didn't either. Who is this guy with a big smile? I can't see who it is. Is that Rodney? Well, you're Rodney. Right. <laughs> Hey, I hope it's painful for yours. <laughs> 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 
Oh my. I can't get good pictures of the slides, so I thought maybe you could tune in on this. Here, this is Linda Mays' husband, uh, Ron Raynor. They live in Manteca now. He's been with Contel, the telephone company up there for 23 years. This is Jack Cobb. This is uh, uh, the Spangler girls' husband. I got a shot of them a while ago. Janice, Janice Spangler, and uh, it's Dennett now. They have the True Value Hardware Store here in Exeter. Next to Paul is, uh, and right next to Rodney is uh, Beverly Brand Theater. Uh, Peggy McLemore and James Spangler, Pete Cobb, Jonah Hartman. That's Peggy. That's Gary Keenan right side. Is that Jason? Kind of maneuver around so I can get Bill Horton in there. There's Bill Horton, honey. I don't remember ever looking like that. Bill Horton. Fern Baldwin in the background. Lady, I don't know, the late Branstetters. There's Alan Branstetter. Maybe it's his wife. I haven't met her yet. Down at the bottom is Janet. She's been one of the ringleaders of this reunion along with her sister, and Marita. There's Linda. I had pictures of some of these earlier. Brother Keith over there. This is Mary Gay's husband, the big fellow with the glasses and beards there. There's Joyce Foster. There's Amy Baldwin. Dorothy Haynes on the left of the screen, Amy in the center. Ray Grimm back there, the heavy set young man with the mustache. There's Bill Polk over in the distance. He retired from the post office before I did. Says he's enjoying being retired too. There's Mary Gay in the foreground. I got a front picture of the three girls. And the last girl on the right, I can't remember her name. But her mother and dad's name was the uh, Betty. Yeah, this is Doug Nunley, back of his head, and Steve in front of him, and Steve's wife. And Steve. Mother checking Doug over for something. <laughs> There's Mary Gay. They have a daughter that teaches Sunday school. I, this is one of the Spangler girls. I didn't hear whether she said Janet or Janice falling off the donkey with Brother Nully was underneath there. He was, he fell off with him. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed up to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his sub substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty family in that land, and he began to be in one. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the cust that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, 
How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this is my son, who is dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as they came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. It's a little different thing. <laughs> and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entered him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress that I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured th thy living with harvest, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we would uh, we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Guess who they are? Name Barnett. No, I bet one was Alan. Aaron Farmer. And Alan Grayson. Karen Farmer and Alan Branstad were in it. There's Alan. There's Alan. I guess he's in the white turban, isn't he? <laughs>
That's Alan down in the corner anyway. <laughs> I'm about to run out of film. I don't know if it'll last until the project comes home. Yes, this is the story of the prodigal son that Rodney read to buy from the Bible, reenacted by members of the Friendways cast. <laughs> I'm getting a warning that the end of the film is near, so I may not be able to finish this particular sequence. But I think you've seen most of the people that you knew with. And I just hope you can recognize a few of them.
when they were growing up, I had somebody in church say to me, well, Brother Nana, you're young. You learn. And then when I got a little older, they said, oh, well, you're too old. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't win. <laughs> so, you have to hold your own role uh, and get some ideals while you're young. Bill and Florence have met a lot for me, and some of you know it's become as one time one. And I can say that I really appreciate Bill and Florence and what they've meant not only to me personally, to my wife, but to my family. And you know, you'll never know, Bill and Florence, you will never know the influence you've had over the might not be in the church today, might not even be in Christian today. It will have to make Bill and Florence part of the church. I don't know. We will never know. And I know this, that all of us need all the help we need, especially you, who went through the friendly and now you're the grown and you have your own families and your children are grown. And so it all comes back to you. And uh, my advice to you as a grandfather, my great my advice to you is in the process of making a living, don't forget to live. What does the profit of death if you gain the whole world and lose his own man? And you know, as well as I, when I came. One of the first things I told the church was where I pastored before I came here, I left the church. I'm realizing how important a strong fatherly figure is to the structure of the Christian family. For this, I am grateful to you. <coughs> now, please forgive me. You know I'm not striving for myself. I'm trying to get a self across. I hope you take it. I'm grateful for you. You set a wonderful example for my two brothers and my husband. Thank you, Dad, for trying to be the best father you can be. We always found time to laugh and cry and even enjoy the rough times. You always installed in us a sense of pride to be a, a sense of family unity and mutual love in spite of disagreement. A feeling inside of me, I'll keep forever, that thank you for being you. Through the years, you all the promise that they promise and how we think of you. Thank you. Being honest with your feelings is a very important to learn and pray in raising a family and being alive. And then she closed and said, you see that? I think you're true. <laughs> Those were trying times.
So some of us that are a lot closer to 50 than we are to 40 relate to this a lot better than some of these young people. The one thing that I always appreciate about Reverend Nunn, which is I respect it. I have that respect for him to this day. I don't think he ever said a thing, did a thing, or brought the group, the group of people together to discuss something that he didn't believe in one hundred percent. Well, you agree with it or not. <laughs> but you have to have it in your heart to feel the respect for the man that fears the man who wholeheartedly believes that he did everything he did from the time he got up in the morning, drinks and so forth. And that is just go through life and have respect for him. There is a man always trying to be.
at about four days after the surgery, well, the radical surgery of a little over eight hours of surgery. And about the fourth day after the surgery, I wasn't hallucinating. I know I was in a sound mind. And I reached the bottom of it. I got clear of the bottom of it, the size of myself, and shooting myself. And time just stood still, just like that, just like you turn a light on. That room lightened up. It was in the way of the room and night. The room lightened up into the presence of my bed. Now, what was happening, I was down the part of my body where the disease was, it was nothing there but just an unearthly whiteness. You know, we couldn't explain that whiteness there. And I could see the other, just to come out and the other part of my body. I'm looking down at that, and a voice beside me. The hand comes to a point over my cat six, seven years ago. I cleaned you up. We're doing it again. Enjoy the night. And I argued with that voice. I said, with that awful thing on me, I can't wear that. I'm going to ride up my skin. Enjoy the night. That evening, I got complete. I got a couple of double hands there. Uh, physical healing and special healing and flesh. Uh, my life will never be the same. God is real. Trust him. Uh, uh, many of us, we've had times where we realize that we don't have to see the world and some other way. But God is there. We can just look for it and ask him. Oh, oh. <laughs> Get a little of this for you. Uh, going to walk on across the road. Here's the cattle on the hill with a little bit of the hail and snow. Let me take a closer look at this. Yeah, that's hail. But uh, people are out just going wild over this. They're all over. Can you? the traffic going by. <laughs> this is unusual traffic for Rocky Hill Drive. But uh, there's a little better shot of the hill. And there's some ambitious hikers up there. Uh, this is on the sunny side or the west side of the hill where the Easter sunrise service is. I didn't even get a picture of the cross up there, but it was still there. And then I see the artists that have been up here. Newer names. Newer names. <laughs> Every generation. Okay, we'll pull it back to the focus where I am and where I'm looking at it see the people and the snow. The sun's coming out, it's just beautiful. Here we are at the stop sign of uh, Spruce and Rocky Hill Road where it turns into Fireball and it seems so strange to see all that ice with olive trees. <laughs> Usually, here's another uh, sunny, warm climate crop tree that hasn't put out leaves yet, of course, but it will. And I think those are uh, plums of some kind. They're not used to this. That's Mansker's house. There's the old Gill house. Hill Drive. And the high school bus yard. Okay, I think that's just about the snow trip this time. It's been fun. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Okay, there's no one behind me at the stop sign here of Chestnut and I Street looking towards the church.
and there's some of the puddles of water that have accumulated. And Sandra, you remember that little dupe? Okay. Do you remember the little white duplex that became such an eyesore across the street from the church? Some time back, it burned, and now we have a clear view across here. I, uh, you might remember the little white house. No one was hurt in the fire, but some personal belongings were lost, of course. And uh, this is coming up on H Street. I'm going to make a right turn onto H Street off Chestnut here. Traffic is very mild. And there is my Aunt Jewel's house. You can see a little ice on the dune buggy and on her yard. Okay. Well, Sandra, while the sun is shining so nicely, Lloyd, this, remember Robinson's Park across the street when the girls were little? This is what Robinson's Park looks like now. Have an open house over there. I don't know if this is sharp enough right now to read that, but there it is. Oh, well, the sun's not on it right. It's kind of glancing off it. But for sale signs all up and down the street, we have two neighbors. Well, okay, there's been a development since I've been going to Merced. Looks like we have three neighbors over there. Three driveways occupied. And then this is a you know, neighbor that bought the rental from us. That's his pickup there. He trimmed the trees out real good this year, so he shouldn't have any problems for a while. And I'm going to get out here out of the sunlight. And there's the old home place, back home after our snow trip. It's been a nice little ride. I wish your mother could have taken it. She is back inside uh, doing better today, um, although she still has a very sore throat. Well, we'll catch you later. There you are. Are you focusing on me now? Uh-huh. I'm sure. So I'm running. I'm running. And you're sucking on a piece of candy. I got something in my mouth. Dad, and he would like to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Sandra. This is uh, your life, Sandra. This, this is your life. No. I don't think I need to do that. <laughs> anyway. You've reached the summit, I suppose, and and I've gone over it. <laughs> and I guess it's either downhill or it's all uphill, one or the other. But anyway, <laughs> uh, they want me to say something, but I or want me to say something funny. Get out of my way. Anyway, they wanted me to say something, and, and now I'm looking up at the mic, just to, at the top of my glasses. <laughs> say something funny, anyway, about you, and you know, what can you say about your sister that's funny? <laughs> Except too much, maybe. Except I thought it'd be nicer to think about uh, the nice things, and uh, the good times, and, and just remember the the times when we were kids and you had freelance with my car while I was in the Air Force and spinning my tires and then how nervous you got when all the boys wanted to meet you when you brought the car out to me when I was in Tucson and uh, stop. <laughs> Anyway, about the funniest story on both of us was when we'd gone to a youth rally. Mom and Dad had gone out of town. We came by to check on the house, and Scamp was loose with the chain dragging behind him. 
And even as a 16 or 17 year old, I hated to go in the backyard in the dark. But I was back there trying to tie him back up to his barrel. And about that time, you got the front door open and and uh, started screaming. So I ran back out the front and uh, let out a war hoop when I saw the smoke coming out of the coming out of the back uh, coming out of the, the front door. And I was about ready to chomp on anybody that came through the door and and you were grabbing me to simmer me down because you knew what was going on and it just turned out there was a tree light had shorted out and uh, about that time we noticed that Mr. Madsen's lights were coming on and so we uh, tied Scamp up real fast, unplugged the lamp and took off to Leonard Dolores' to stay all night. And uh, then Mr. Matson was just trying to figure things out, out after the fact, after we were already gone. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be better if I sat down or something. You know that? Yes, please this is do. Your life, Sandra. Okay, yeah. You folks start any time. Well, Sandra, this is your life. Uh, sitting here thinking about while we were planning this Friendways reunion, uh, thinking about 40 years back or so, maybe not quite that much, but a few years less than that. Out the ranch there, you're playing in the mud and the water and squeezing that mud up between your toes. And you and Rodney were just laughing and playing, and you had the best time. Yeah. And then what did you do, Bill? <laughs> then we give you a bath and cleans you up and brought you back to town. You folks are in the store. And we brought you back to town to the store. And over here back, I mean, that, that isn't Pinky. That's a, uh, you remember Pinky? <laughs> the doggy. The little doggy. <laughs> we call this one Stinker. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Not not like the two little kids that played in the mud, but <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. see we have those fun. <clears throat> I think Forrest wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the trips we went on. Yeah, again, this is your life, Sandra. Remember those trips to the mountains we used to have? I remember one particularly. You know those night hikes we took? You know, we always wait till after dark, so it'd be night hikes. So we went along, and somebody would always come around near the back, and at the right moment, they'd let out a yell. Well, I remember the little blonde girl walking very peacefully up the road, having a good time. And when that yell went off, I think she jumped a mile in the air and screamed. And <laughs> This is your life, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I sure wish you could come to the Friendways reunion, but I've got something here I'm going to send to you. A scarf from Friendways. This, this is special. And what you do with it is up to you. Just don't tear it up, please. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> it's good. Okay. All right. That out. sounds good. That's good. You need to look at that because that's what you Okay. Well, I'll look at that, Cecil. Elsie, it's you good bet. to have you here, and I'm really glad we had this chance to be with you. Uh, we'll uh, get back to you a little later, and Cecil has something that we want to try to put on film for this uh, This Is Your Life, Sandra. Okay. Cecil, I think I'm ready. And you might want to go closer because it is... I don't have to. I have a zoom lens. Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? Sit down and don't shake. Right. Okay. And hope it works. Yeah. Come on.
Oh, this is Angie. Okay. When she had pneumonia? Yeah. This is at Cecil's and Peggy's in uh, San Jose. There's Peg on the left, I believe. There's Shirley on the right, and this is Angie in the middle with, uh, uh, yeah. that's Elsie, Elsie holding Angie. Angie was real ill. She had, she had pneumonia or something close to that. Are you trying to get Raymond to look at the camera? Skinny. <laughs> Hey, you don't have to mention skinny all the time. <laughs> I think I have a, a nicer rounded figure now than I did then. <laughs> well, here's where the kids are wrestling. There's Mandy, Sandra. <laughs> so get, get with it, LaVon. I know. With Karen and, and Rod. Rodney. And, and, and Grandma. Gail. <laughs> There's Sandra leaning on somebody. Rodney. Her brother. On Rodney, okay. I, I don't see this as clearly. Shirley and Doug. the viewer. Shirley and Doug. Shirley and Doug Holliday. This is Shirley's first husband. Gail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Karen. Karen. It's strange how her figure improves so much more than mine has. Here she was a little bit on the chubby side, and now she is the model. Raymond, Elsie's husband. Ray, Raymond off in the corner again. <laughs> A little camera shy. I still think I'm doing it back at me. At least I can take the leap. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the movement, movements things. are right. They're not walking backwards. <laughs> oh, is Rodney giving the camera a grin? How about him? He doesn't usually do that. <laughs> Camera shy. Shirley. <laughs> That's nice. I guess we all need kind of funny, don't we? Yeah. Can you move on? There's the three stooges. I think I'm doing it wrong. Well, when you had it on the go, it was upside down. Well, you don't know that. You guess it. Oh. Well, I think they're moving forward, Cecil. Yeah, but... That's right. We got the big face back on Mom's lap. There's a sick baby. I still got those pieces of iron that I bent. How long ago was that? 30 years ago?
Uh, a little bit later, we'll give you a picture of that baby. I'll try to get her on film a little bit later. Right. Karen looks just like Angie. I mean, Michelle, except her hair is black. I'll tell you, Karen, she did love that way. She said she never was on her little baby, but so she prayed she wouldn't put it as much as she did Angie. I think that's Easter, so that's yeah. probably the end of that. Okay. <coughs> okay. Until we get over there again. I've got it. Go ahead. Okay. We're recording this at Cecil and Peg's in in uh, Boulder City, Nevada. This is some pictures uh, taken when we made a visit to them in San Jose. Sandra, this is Angie uh, being held by her grandmother, Elsie. There's Grandma Liston in the background. Uh, this was the time that Angie was so sick, and you kids played around and sort of thing, naturally. Uh, there I am teasing Raymond, Elsie's husband. And this was when Angie was so sick, uh, the doctors uh, said she had pneumonia, and almost she was just very near death. There are you kids playing around. There's Sandra leaning on Rodney. And this is Doug and Shirley Holliday, Elsie's daughter, Elsie and Raymond's daughter. And Angie was their firstborn. This is Gail in the little white pajamas. <laughs> and here's Karen. Okay, you kids were really having a good time putting on the show for us. This is Elsie's husband, Raymond. He acted a little camera shy. He didn't talk too much, but... Uh, <laughs> he turned around. Okay, <clears throat> there's Doug uh, leaning against the furnace. Oh, I guess, I don't know for sure. There was no sound on the 8 millimeter. There's Rodney sticking his head up. But I was clowning a little bit, too. Yeah, there's Rodney, real camera grin there. <laughs> and Gail, she wasn't too camera shy at the time. There's Doug and Shirley. I don't know why Shirley was so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> Cecil, Elsie, and LaVon. Sandra. Okay. And then there's Elsie's family. Karen, herself, Raymond, Shirley, and Doug. Cecil and Peg, and Grandma Liston. Now, it just seems to kind of run in a family, those of you that know Sandra, to do things like this. <laughs> this is Angie, and I'll try to get a picture of her as of now. She is here with her husband in Las Vegas. And uh, I think uh, we're going to meet them later, and I'll try to get a picture so you can compare Angie to this shot. Okay. Now you're on a different reel. I see. Okay. So you probably don't want that. Oh, I don't know. Sandra doesn't mind seeing Gail. Gail was very busy at Easter time. <laughs> Is that bad? Yeah. 
Аминь. Четыре, да? Well, Cecil thought you might not be too interested in some of this, so he's speeding it up a little. However, I thought you'd be interested in seeing some of it. Are you cutting some of the picture off at the top, Cecil? Mm -hmm. No, I guess not. Okay. As a park in Richmond. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, there's your cousin Gail. All dressed up for Easter. I tell you, that was the sight. Is the rest of it a, stuff like this, people? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, this is great for us. I'm going to re I'm going to keep some of this for us. <laughs> yeah, you can slow it down if you want to, Cecil. Now, this is Cecil's father-in-law, Fuzz Feigard. We've only known him as Fuzzy all his all the time we've known him. <laughs> he's a carpenter by trade, construction, and he's uh, built things for his grandchildren, for Gail and Bobby and uh, Milpitas. Oh, uh, somebody besides me likes airports. <laughs> I noticed a little saying that Cecil and Peg have over here, uh, a little statuette of a little ship. It says, when your ship comes in, you'll probably be waiting at the airport. Was his mother? Yeah. I see. Where had she flown in from? Nebraska. Ah, oh, thank you. Is this her? Yeah. Had the shore of the ocean, huh? Yeah. Yeah, pretty lucky finding the, what I was looking for on the first grade of... Yeah. You mean it's not labeled? Well, it's not that part of it. They said they'll be correct, and I just thought, there's Peg's mom, look how much different she is. I thought that was Peg. <laughs> There's, oh, there is Fuzz and Alta. Boy, they're all dressed up for something. What was the occasion? Oh, yeah. You had a couple of those in your area, didn't you, Cecil? Or was there just one then? Uh-huh. Quite a treat for kids uh, living in the city to go to one of these places, and be able to touch animals, and even get to ride some of them. <laughs> Look at that! 
Little cowgirl. Francisco Bay? picture now. Phone, Cecil. I think I have to repeat this to get it on. <laughs> you should. Some of these things, people I don't know. These little boys are friends of theirs. What boys? I can't remember the little name. Bobby. The best action you can get is ask a couple of kids and they'll get, always get into a fight <laughs> or a struggle, a tussle. Remember George? George? George and Irene. George and Eileen. George and Peggy. Peggy and Gail. Oh, yeah. Jesse. Uh, is that our no, Were they in your square dance club? No, that's all. No. Uh-huh. That was one of our birds. That one, I think, flew out of uh, Priscilla and Frank's house that they were taking care of. Mm -hmm. Oh, she got her something.
Oh, Fuzzy coming to the rescue. Yeah. Spent several at your house. That's what John Strand gave me. Yeah, I was just going to say when she started opening, that's what John Strand gave me. Remember when he gave her that big teddy bear and she cried? She wanted one so bad and it just. She's great. There you are. There you are. Yeah, brought mom up and the whole child. There's Sandra. There's Sandra. Grandma. Rocky. Language, words, and words. Oh. That's when I was a proud insurance man or something like that, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I was going, oh, yeah, well, I was doing my part to set the world on fire, the business world, <laughs> professional. <laughs> uh. I gave you a Levi jacket. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it fits. Yeah. You can remember hair, can't you, LeVon? When, when I had hair? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that hair? I know you were thinking it, though. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't put words in your mouth or anything like that. <laughs> uh, almost as big as Gail. <laughs> oh boy. Peggy has enlarged on her gourmet skills, I tell you. She is a good cook. <laughs> you said it, we didn't. <laughs> But I don't, I don't see you that way, Peggy. Uh, oh yeah, that was her TV dog. That's right. 
a little bit older than when Angie came out. That's their end table, though. Wow, where'd that one come from? Well, where's Leonard and Dolores? There's Dolores. Yeah. You think it was their house? I think so. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah there's Leonard. He's getting him to do tricks. Golly, I don't remember that. I do. And that's when we went up in the snow uh, on Sequoia. Everybody thinks we were cold. Yeah. I didn't know how to take pictures and we didn't have enough light and I lived with everything. <laughs> Several things wrong, huh? <laughs> Usually you have too much glare from snow. Well, it was almost dark when we got up there. It was dust and I didn't set the camera properly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> There's a general curtain. Mm -hmm. Do you have a few more minutes of this? Oh, uh, yeah. It's almost the end. Is it? Okay. Yeah, we can always cut out what we don't want on the second recording. Okay, this last few very dim scenes were taken at Sequoia National Park on one of Cecil and Peg's visits, and of course we can't, can't make out anything. <laughs> it lit a match under somebody's foot. <laughs> Try to warm them up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, Cecil, I'm running out towards the end of my battery. I'm, it's not off yet. End of film. End of film. Okay. Well, I enjoyed seeing all those, and I have recorded for our posterity some that uh, we didn't know you had even and had forgotten about. So I'm real happy that you thought of this idea of bringing out your old film so I could get some on this tape. This has been great. Now this is uh, February, I believe, the 13th. Uh, 12th. Is this the 12th? Yeah. Okay. I think I have a gadget here. Yep, there it is, February the 12th, 89. Well, yeah, here it is Mike. This is Amber. Who are you? What's your name, honey? What? Oh, tell me what your name is.
<laughs> yeah. Mike just told us he won $25 in the grocery store where they bought the film. They uh, did some shopping for us on the way over. He's been working, this is Sunday, and he's been working all day as a painter on a construction job over here. Hey, wave to Sandra. I'm going to send this to Sandra, Angie. <laughs> Now this is the little bitty baby we saw on the film, the eight millimeter film a while ago that was so sick when she was. Yep. <laughs> no, and you're not fat now either. <laughs> oh, here, old Chauncey, he wants to get in the act too. Yeah, he, he wants to get in the act too. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll get some more footage in a little bit. This is little Amber, Angie and Mike's daughter. About four years old, and she can talk a leg talk to you when you get started. <laughs> People, Peggy just... Peggy just took all this beautiful stuff out of the picture. That's what she did. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra, this is uh, your Aunt Elsie, and I'll let her take it from here. This is your life, Sandra. Sandra, do you remember when you uh, went to the swimming pool, or went down swimming and your hair turned green? Uh, do you remember uh, you and Rod saving Karen uh, from the swimming pool when she jumped in off of the log and hit her neck and passed out? Uh, what about the camp we went to down at Ponca City? Didn't you enjoy that? You and Rod seemed to have such a good time. And what a delightful month it was for us when you came back to stay with us on the farm and got acquainted with you, which I'd not had the chance to do before. I uh, can't really think of an awful lot of things that happened. I'm sure they did during the time that you were with us. But it's been a long time, and your Aunt Elsie doesn't remember a heck of a lot. <laughs> you have a good birthday, and love to be with you. Okay. Are you filming? No, don't film already, Sandra. Uh, we would like to be there, but it's, it's not quite possible. But uh, we can remember you as a, a baby. And, and growing up and everything, and you and uh, Rodney, or Rodney as Gail says, uh, uh, playing and, and kind of scuffling and everything. And we got a little bit of that, that uh, we took some movies out today and, and uh, Wayne videotaped it and uh, hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, we were many, remember so many times that Mooney's Grove and the stuff uh, wearing out of bathing suits on the bottom, uh, sliding down the, the water slide or the waterfall. Lemon Grove. Lemon Grove, Lemon Grove whatever. Oh. Anyway. McKay's Point. McKay's Point. Point. Yeah, McKay's yeah. Point. That was and, wore out a few bathing suits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sandra. I remember when you were about a year and a half old, and it was so hot when your folks were living in the cabins, and somebody gave you an ice cube, and it felt very cool, but it got very cold, and you started crying because your hands were freezing. 
Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't let anybody you take it away from you. Wouldn't me. let them take it away from you, but you were sure crying because your hands were cold. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that, that sounds about like her. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bye. Happy birthday. Well, you're going to be Amber for the picture. She's not a very happy camper. Well, Sandra, this is another family. That uh, This is Angie and uh, Elsie's granddaughter. And that baby with her head buried is Amber. This is uh, Mike and Angie's daughter. Can you smile at Sandra? We last saw them in... Oh, would you say something for the camera, Amber? Yeah, I saw them. Oh. <laughs> Well, we last saw them at the family reunion, the Liston family reunion in uh, Ripley, Oklahoma, and they came up to the campground on the lake. Uh, I think you'll have seen them in some of those pictures that we hope to send, and uh, they have since moved. In fact, uh, Elsie brought uh, Angie and Amber here to Las Vegas, where Mike has been working a while in construction. He is a painter. And uh, they are a reunited family as of this weekend. <laughs> so it's a kind of a happy time for them. She was a singer at the family reunion, too. Yeah, she did a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> Singing. Yes. Amber. Yes, Amber was right in there. If you'll remember the little blonde girl clapping her hands and, and waving and singing right along with us. She was reading the notes, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, folks. It's nice of you to sit in for this occasion of Saunders' birthday. Would you like Happy to wish birthday. her? Happy birthday. That's Saunders right there. Yes, please. No, I don't know. That's Saunders, right? I think it is. That's Rodney. Yeah. That? Uh, that's saying it looks about normal. Oh, we did it. I remember when he got those things. <laughs> I don't remember the exact year. I guess we're getting ready to leave here. It was uh, mom went out. Yeah. Mrs. Liston. Four hours. Four hours. There's Gail. I ran back and got a kiss, I think. That was, yeah, that was me with a camera bag. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. That's a pretty good one of Mom. This is the Chevy that Rodney had his accident on Rocky Hill with. He left it on the road upside down. He had help to do it, but... <laughs> but uh, three boys' lives were spared that time. Uh, 51, I believe it was. I bought that from one of my policy holders for a debit car. It was a dandy. And when Rodney got up into his teens and could drive his own car, he kind of began to take it over. Yeah, this is Gail, and this is the Plymouth that would... How fast would that go, Cecil? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice car, though. Nice to drive. Okay. There goes Gail. <laughs> this is the house in Sunnyvale that they remodeled just before they had to move.
to uh, Henderson or to Boulder City. Peggy, she's just lit the birthday cake for Cecil. Big five zero. Well, five zero plus. Oh, it is plus, huh? <laughs> 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 Let's see. That, well, that'll last. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I like the sleep timer. 
Uh, yeah, Baker and Baker. <laughs> yeah. In case well, I had to make some the bedroom, on which we've got TV, has got the same thing on it. The 19 inch mm -hmm. bedroom. Mm -hmm. So you have the remote control for the 13 inch? Yeah. Yeah, that, no, that's really nice. You uh, always enjoy it. We bought a 13 inch for the trailer with just the push button. Uh, tuner on it, which was a nice feature because we sit at the table and, and the TV is right within reach of us where we watch it. So I said, not any need of having a remote on it. But I can play the VCR through it when I have a jack on the back that, and I just run from the VCR a single uh, single wire hookup. And if, uh, but I don't have the jacks where I could. Uh, well, the VCR works on it, but it doesn't have the jacks uh, that I'd like to use so that I could use the camera with it that much. Yeah. Uh huh. Like I say, it was only thirty dollars more, but. Well, I asked you if you wanted. I was trying to hold the price down under three hundred dollars. Yeah. Sure. So I thought, well, real No, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, but I, I won't pass it up. <laughs> doesn't know what's going on. Well, happy birthday, Sandra, and this is your life. This is the big one, isn't it? Um, I remember how I felt when uh, this time was reached. However, I think you'll find that your past experiences from here on will be of aid and, and uh, of value to you, and I think as you go along, that uh, you'll see that your experience will add to your life from this birthday forward. After all, in this youth-oriented world, we have to remember what the scholars have taught us in the last few years about the Bible when Paul referred to Timothy as, in his youth, Timothy was 40 years old. So congratulate yourself. <laughs> Mother, do you have something to say? I remember, of course, when you were born and how, what a joy you brought to us. And I remember the times that we'd take off and go to Fresno for lunch and shopping. And that always was a joy to do. Your life was busy, and sometimes I couldn't keep up with you, but. It was a delight, and I wish you many more, more birthdays, and hope you have a very, very good time on This Is Your Life. <laughs> yes, we do. I have fond memories also, Sandra. I, being a father and gone from home a lot, as I was, missed a lot of your life in uh, learning about your friends. I knew a few of them, but uh, not as many as you had because you had many. But uh, going back a little further, I remember when we were in the grocery store uh, on West Pine, the uh, Maydean Lane, the wife of the man we bought the store from came in one day and you were four years old at the time standing just in front of the counter she came in and made the comment my aren't you a pretty little girl and your very modest reply was I know it <laughs> we see so much of you in Mandy that uh, 
uh, we call you two on film when we see you momentarily by the wrong names occasionally. So <laughs> everybody agrees with us that you and Mandy do favor. And uh, uh, I have told everyone that uh, Jenny uh, favors her Aunt Betty to me. But we did enjoy raising you. Uh, I, as your mother said, there were many times we just couldn't keep up with you. Uh, one time, you had to be slowed down by your teacher. Mr. Henry Simpson did the job for us. <laughs> now, you may remember that. <laughs> but that's all part of learning. And uh, all your experiences have helped you in your uh, life after high school and into college and into your marriage also, I believe. We're very proud of you, and we do wish you a uh, very happy birthday and many more to you and many more years to your family. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> now, this little interview is partially over. I'll take another shot of our room with the new sofa here. Your mother wanted to be sure we had that in there, and I'll be right over to the camera in a minute. Here we are, Sandra. Chauncey just hopped up on the couch for us to make a little remembrance for you. Mother wanted to be sure that we showed you this picture you sent us. We think it's very pretty hanging above our fireplace like that, don't you? And we'll come around now and take a picture of the couch. It is dark gray. I imagine it'll show up all right for you. Chauncey spends a lot of time right up on that back rest there. And these two first cushions here are a day bed. They fold out and make a day bed, have a mattress on it. So remember that when you come down here and hurry up and do that. This couch at the end there, the end piece where Chauncey is, makes is a recliner. And it's very comfortable. Your mother has really enjoyed this, and I'm glad she has it. So we wish you again, Sandra, happy birthday, and we love you. She was too young to be a contender.